Hello, in this segment, I'm going to teach you how to do implicit differentiation. This is a differentiation tactic that is useful when you are not easily able to solve for y. Uh, this is an uh, approach that you can use for any problem at all, but it's really uh, most practical when you have a really complicated function um, that is not solvable, or you can't solve y's a function of x. Um, let's start with uh, an example. I'll just show you what an easy example might look like, and we'll work through it, and then we'll do a number of other examples. Um, I'm going to just start with uh, uh, x squared plus 2y squared equals 9. Um, now, I'm going to do this a couple ways. I want to do it with implicit differentiation. And then I'm going to do it using the standard type of differentiation and just compare the two. Um, in this example, you really don't need to use implicit differentiation because you could solve for this for y fairly easily. Uh, however, I think you'll see that using the implicit derivative actually is easier uh, in this particular case. Um, so the key to thinking about the uh, implicit differentiation is thinking about every single derivative as a chain rule. Um, so I'm going to just kind of put parentheses around each of that x and that y. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the derivative of this term and then this term and then this term all separately. And uh, we're going to work, work through the chain rule for every one of them. So for x to the second, the first step is you uh, take the derivative of the outside uh, the second step of the chain rule is you leave the inside untouched right there. And then the third step, uh, step of the chain rule is you multiply by 1 and dx. So the derivative of x, typically we say it's 1, but it's, it's 1 dx. Um, for this, we're going to have the 2 come down. So the first step is 4 something to the first. That's the outside derivative. Uh, the second step is you rewrite y, and uh, then you uh, multiply by the derivative of y, which is 1 dy, uh, and then finally the derivative of 9 is 0. Um, so now the goal is to get dy over dx. So that means I need to take all my terms that are dy terms, keep them on the left, all the dx terms, move them over to the right, and then we can do some division and get what we want. Um, so I'm going to do minus 2x dx on both sides. And I get 4y dy uh, equals minus 2x dx. And then if you want to solve for dy over dx, we're just going to do that with algebra. Divide this side by dx cancel, and then divide this side by 4y. So I get dy over dx equals uh, minus x over 2y. Um, so this is the derivative. Um, one thing that you might notice that's unusual about implicit differentiation is typically your derivative will be a function of x and a function of y. That's not something that you're accustomed to seeing. Uh, it's still, it's fine. Um, if you were to need to plug in a, a, an x value to evaluate this derivative at a point, you would actually plug in the x and the y value of whatever point that, um, that you're studying. So um, I want to do this same problem again uh, by solving for x, and uh, we'll, we'll kind of talk it through it again. So let me just write out x squared plus 2y squared equals 9. Uh, going back to some algebra, minus x squared plus 2y squared equals 9 minus x squared. Uh, divide by 2, so you get uh, y squared equals 9 over 2 is 4.5 minus 1 half x squared. 
uh, then you have to take the square root of both sides. So you have y equals, uh, I'm going to actually write this as to the 1 half power, 4.5 minus 1 half x squared. And then uh, y prime, this would be a chain rule, be 1 half, drop that power by 1, uh, recopy the inside, 4.5 minus 1.5x squared, and then multiply that by the derivative of the inside. This is 0. The 4.5 has a derivative of 0. Bring the 2 down, so minus 1 half times 2 is 1, and then x to the 1. So that is the derivative, and that's in terms of x. And uh, I want to just uh, maybe recopy that up here and write it in a fraction form. Now we've got x over 2 square roots of 4.5 minus 1 half x squared. Um, so um, uh, what I want you to notice is we've got the x, we've got the 2. Uh, what was y here? y was that so if you took the 4.5 if you took if you took 4.5 minus 1 half x squared to the 1 half uh, you would have y prime equals x over 2y and uh, lost a, a negative here what did I lose a negative uh, I subtracted x squared 9 minus x squared uh, we multiplied by the derivative of the inside which was negative uh, sorry, it was negative x right there. The derivative of negative one half x squared is two times a half is is negative, and that's negative one. So this was a negative x. I got that. Um, I missed that negative, but we fixed it. So this would be negative, um, and you can see that that is exactly the same derivative as we got uh, up here in terms of x and y. So that's just kind of an introduction to implicit differentiation. Um, this is an unusual problem because most problems you probably can't do both ways. Um, and um, uh, I actually want to do this problem one more time uh, with one more caveat. Uh, I'll take this page off. We had uh, x squared. So there's two notations that you can use when you're doing implicit differentiation. You can uh, just remember that dy over dx is the same as y prime. So that is a fact. Those are just two ways to say the same thing. Uh, 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 so uh, we just use the dy over dx notation. Sometimes the y prime notation is used. And let me just show you how that works. Uh, the short version is uh, when you take the derivative of an x term, you just, for in this case, get 2x. But when you take the derivative of a y term, you get 2 times 2, you get 4y, y prime. And then uh, the derivative of 9 is still 0. So the short version is when you take the derivative of an x term, you just get the, the number and the x and whatever exponents there. Uh, when you take the derivative of a y term, you get a y prime. Uh, constants still have a derivative of zero. So why is that? Let me show you. Um, going back to a moment ago, we used the dx and dy notation, and I got 2x dx was the derivative of x squared. 4y dy was the derivative of 2y squared, and then equals zero. And here's what they're doing uh, to, get d to get the y prime. They're skipping a step. They're saying... We can divide, as long as we divide every term by something, we can divide by whatever we like. So they are actually choosing to divide everything by dx. And those cancel out. So basically any term with a dx, um, any term with a dx, the, the, the dx that was supposed to be there canceled out. And uh, so now you take away your 2x for y times y prime equals negative 2x divided by 4y. You get y prime equals minus x over y, uh, over 2y, sorry. So the same thing all over again, just a different notation. 
Um, so an excellent question is why do we care? Who cares? Um, my answer is I, I think the dx and dy notation is a lot more simple for especially a first time learner of implicit differentiation. Uh, it's easy to look here and say, why does the X get treated differently than the Y? That doesn't make sense. Uh, even though it does make sense when you see that, oh, we're dividing out all the DXs without showing the step, I think it's just more intuitive to learn the DX and DY method. Um, when we take a second derivative, you'll find that the Y prime notation is much easier to work with. So it, it, I think it's good to learn both. Um, let's try another example. lined up here. So we are going to evaluate this derivative, the derivative of this function at one com negative one comma zero. Um, this is a, uh, 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 I, I don't know if it's a function. It's probably not. I don't know what the graph of this would look like. Um, it's easy to call, just start calling things functions, but this may not be a function. Um, it's an equation uh, that, so I, I don't have any idea what the graph looks like. I want to know what the slope of the tangent line is at negative one comma zero. Um, clearly, trying to solve this for y would be a nightmare or maybe impossible. Um, so this is a, a great candidate for implicit differentiation where you deal with every single term individually. And we're just going to start at 6x squared. Uh, that is going to be 12x dx. Um, now, the next term is a little bit more tricky. This is 3x times y. And this actually is a product rule. I'm just going to kind of leave some space right there. We'll come back to that. Um, the derivative of 2y squared is 4y dy. The derivative of 17y is 17 dy. The derivative of 6 is 0 equals the derivative of 0 is, is 0. So that's kind of where we are currently. Um, for 3x dy, think about if you did your product rule, f is x, g is y, f prime is 1 dx, g prime is 1 dy, and here you need f prime times g plus g prime times f. Don't forget these product rules that just pop up in the middle of, a, of, of an equation. f prime times g is dx times y. And then g prime times f is x dy. So we've got the, the, the bones of what we're going to do here. I need to simplify it quite a bit. 12x dx plus 3y dx plus 3x dy plus 4y dy plus 17 dy equals zero. I told you I want to keep the dy's on the left and I'm going to move the dx's to the right. So it means we're going to do uh, minus 12x dx uh, minus 3y dx. And we're going to have uh, uh, 3x dy plus 4y dy plus 17 dy equals negative 12x dx minus 3y dx. Uh, now that I have the dy terms on one side, the dx terms on the other, I want to factor out the dy and the dx. Left over, we'll have 3x plus 4y plus 17. On the right, we'll have minus 12x minus 3y when we factor out the dx and the dy. And it looks awful, but we're almost done. So don't get too scared. It actually works out pretty nice.
divide both sides by dx and divide both sides by 3x plus 4y plus 17 because we want to get that dx over dy on the left side by itself. So those go and we get dy over dx equals minus 12x minus 3y over 3x plus 4y plus 17. That is my derivative formula. It is in terms of x and y. Uh, I told you originally we were going to plug in the x and y coordinate negative 1 comma 0. So let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, dy over dx at negative 1 comma 0 is going to be minus 12 times negative 1 minus 3 times 0 uh, and uh, 3 times negative 1 plus 4 times 0 plus 17 makes 12 over uh, that's negative 3 plus 17 and 14 so 6 7 and uh, if we want to just get wild and crazy here Let's just find a tangent line. Y equals 6 sevenths X plus B. I'll put in uh, 0 for Y, 6 sevenths for the slope, negative 1 for X plus B, and B appears to be 6 sevenths. So that is the slope, uh, that is the equation of the tangent line at my curve. Now, it's a whole page. I can't even get it all on the screen. However, um, it, every step is fairly simple. It's just a lot of steps, a lot of you know, keeping the negative straight and, and, and uh, all that. But it's, it's fairly doable. Um, let's try another example. Another uh, equation, I, I have no idea what this graph looks like. I, I don't really care. Uh, we're not really that interested in the graphs here. We're just taking weird, wild equations that you don't know how to deal with and making them uh, something you can work with. That's what we're doing here. Um, in this case, we have two product rules, one on the left side, x times sine of 2y, on the right side, y times cosine of 2x. So we're going to do two product rules here. Uh, also, sine of 2y is a chain rule. Cosine of 2x is a chain rule because the inside of sine and cosine have a, an, an, another function, another uh, a, 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 a compositions. Uh, so we're going to do f is x, g is sine 2y. f is y, g is cosine 2x. Uh, f prime is 1 dx. g prime is going to be a chain rule. The derivative of sine is cosine. Recopy the inside. Multiply by the derivative of the inside to dy. Over here, f prime is 1 dy. g prime is a chain rule. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Recopy the inside as the second step. Multiply by the inside derivative, which is 2, dx. Now we're going to put all the pieces together. f prime times g is going to be uh, sine 2y dx. And then plus g prime times f, it's going to be x times 2 cosine 2y dy, an equal sign. f prime times g is cosine 2x dy plus g prime times f is actually going to be minus 2y sine 2x dx. 
Uh, now we're going to group the dx's on the right and the dy's on the left. So we're going to do minus sine of 2y dx. And uh, cancel that out. And then we'll do, uh, and I guess I didn't do minus cosine of 2x dy minus cosine 2x dy. Cancel those out. And we'll have on my left side 2x cosine 2y dy minus cosine 2x dy. And then we'll have minus sine 2y dx. And it's a bunch of, bunch of, just a huge mess. All these signs and y's and who knows. But the good news is that we are, we've got all the dy's together. We got all the dx's together. We're going to factor out all the dx's and dy's. So we'll get left over 2x cosine 2y minus cosine 2x. Over here, I take the, the, the dx out and I get minus sine of 2y. And then minus 2y sine 2x. We're almost to the end. It's going to look like a big mess, but that's fine. Divide both sides by dx. Cancel that out. Then we'll divide both sides by 2x cosine 2y minus cosine 2x. 2x cosine 2y. That. Cancel all that out. And finally, we have our derivative dy over dx. Minus sine 2y minus 2y sine 2x. And then on bottom, 2x cosine 2y. Cosine 2x. And uh, there you go. <clears throat> so uh, this is an introduction to implicit differentiation. Uh, in a separate video, I'm going to teach you how to do the second derivative using implicit derivatives.